Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you the battle group preview for the 12th Tartalik. Please remember everything you are about to see is still in beta and therefore subject to change. So the full name for this division is the 12th Tartalikos Hadostali and what that means is 12th Reserve Division. So instead of having a lot of modern equipment you're going back to old school tactics with a lot of infantry and a lot of artillery. However in this case you're also joined by the Pumas in the air which are flying the ME109 G6s. So you actually have some decent air force as well. In this case I'm definitely going for the infantry and artillery style and you can see that I'm using the juggernaut deployment type which is one that I don't particularly use too often but I found that using human wave in the late game can definitely suit this kind of division. So starting in the recon tab we have probably one of the greatest vehicles that's been added to Steel Division 2. This is the BMW 750 ATR and we've got four of them in phase A with one star veterancy. They're an AT rifle mounted on a motorcycle and it's actually pretty good in terms of its rate of fire which is 21 rounds per minute and 40 millimeters of penetration. So these things can chew up light vehicles very very quickly indeed but they die just as quickly. So bear in mind where you place them but honestly in an ambushing position uh, you might be able to pick off like transports with these quite well. So bear that in mind a lot of fun to use maybe not the most practical vehicle in the game but yeah definitely a lot of fun. The next car we have is the 39M Chaba. We've got five of these coming in at phase A with no veterancy. These again have an AT rifle mounted in the turret but they're also accompanied by a machine gun and they've got a little bit of armor. Now this AT rifle that they have, the 39M, it has 26 round per minute rate of fire so pretty damn fast. Again can chew up specifically machine gun mounted half tracks very very quickly so if that's what you're coming up against this is almost the perfect counter. Then I have a card of the Lovash Felderitok and these guys they have one submachine gun, they've got 10 semi-automatic rifles and a machine gun. Now I've got three of these in phase over one star veterancy. The great thing about these 12 man squads is not only do they have the very good stealth they provide you with a lot of recon staying power in the early game, providing you with all the information you need to defend yourself since we are playing in a juggernaut deployment type. Then next up, other choices are the BMW 750MG. You can get six of these in phase if you want, but since it's just an MG mounted motorcycle, not really all that useful since it will be matched at the range of enemy MGs and it will get killed very quickly. Then we have the Felderito at Yaro. These guys are your two-man recon squads. I would probably bring some of these in if they came with a vehicle that was armored and had a weapon, but they do not. So they just have their standard transport motorcycle and you're just paying 15 points for two-man squads. So not really my choice in this case. Moving on to the infantry tab, the first card that I have here is the Lovestist. These guys are a 5 strength leader squad with smoke grenades and those smoke grenades are great for both utility and keeping themselves alive. I would recommend keeping them on return fire, they rely on their rifles and submachine guns so they're going to be better at close ranges regardless, you don't want those rifles giving them away and getting themselves killed. For 20 points, pretty decent leader squad actually. At uh, one star veteran, so you can get three of them in phase A. Then I have a card of the Arkasok. These guys are close range infantry. They have the two HE grenades, 13 strength squads is actually really nice. 12 of their men have rifles. I would prefer if they had semi automatics, but still, since there's so many of them, they do do a lot of damage and can definitely defeat enemy squads at close range. Next up we have the Loves, and these are your standard infantry, nothing particularly special about them except from they do have the AT capability, the Panzerfaust. So if you use them on return fire you can potentially kill things at closer range 
but they need to be within 120 meters to use that. So bear that in mind. In general, these are just your standard line infantry though, which will be engaging at 500 meter range. If you need something that engages with longer range and with machine guns, then you should be choosing the Goyo Solo Shock. These guys are awesome at long range engagements. They have three machine guns and 10 rifles. So if you catch an enemy squad at the 500 meter range, you get all guns of the 13 strength squad on target and the enemy squad will die so quickly. They are like the old Fallschirmjägers of Steel Division Normandy 44. They really, really chew squads up at range. And their three machine guns can pin enemy squads at range just as easily. So nice squads indeed, quite expensive, but put them in the right places and they can pay themselves off very, very well. Then I have another card of the Lovis Tist in Phase B, These, this time at the two-star veteran C to provide a larger command radius. You still get three of them on the card. Then I've got a card of the Lovis. Uh, with, with no veteran C in phase B that gives you 18 on a card. Accompanying those we have the Roham Akasok. These guys are flamethrower squads. Five man flamethrower squads. They've got two smoke grenades. Good for accompanying your mainline infantry, the Lofes, in order to deal with close combat in the mid game. That's what I've got them there for. Then I've got another card of the Arkasok in Phase C. You get 18 on a card with no Veteran C. And finally, the Lovace in Phase C with no Veteran C gives you 27 on a card. And since we're playing Juggernaut, uh, this is all of the infantry you're ever going to need. The only other alternatives in the infantry tab are the BMW 750PKs, which are your standard command infantry on motorcycles. They do actually have radios, so in phase B you can get six of them and can technically use them as radio men. So that could be a purpose of having them, but in general they die very quickly and will often accidentally get killed by artillery and stuff like that, which kind of makes them quite annoying to use. And then the other card is the Arkastist. These guys are a six-man leader squad with a Faust Baton, and they also have a machine gun, so provide a little bit of extra support, but not really what you take a leader squad for. So I would avoid these guys, bring in the Lovis Tis, which have that utility with the smoke grenade. Next up, we have the tank tab, and this is probably the smallest tank tab out of all divisions in the entire game. You have three choices and two slots to fill. And the first choice that I have is the H39s in Phase A. You get eight of them on a card with no veterancy. These are the perfect infantry support tanks. They have HE on their main gun, and they also have a machine gun in a very armored hull. So they actually have 60 millimeters of frontal armor, which is very good in this role because they are not necessarily immune to PTRDs at close range, but they will definitely bounce a lot of those AT rifles that will be the main threat at that at the range they sort of work at. So great fire support for infantry for sure and definitely worth considering for phase A. Then in phase B I have the card of Stugs bringing in 10 of them in phase B with no veterancy. This is as good as it gets in this division. 135 millimeters of penetration, not bad at all. 90 millimeters of frontal armor for 70 points. These Stugs are actually pretty damn good, but nothing special about these ones, same as all the rest, and should be treated as such. Then the only other card you have to choose from in the tank tab is the S35 PK. This is just your standard Samur with the 47mm gun, 70mm of penetration, nothing special about this tank whatsoever basically provides the same role as the H39, but you get so much less of them. You only get two. And yes, they're command units, but I kind of expect to get more on a card, to be honest. So definitely not worth wasting a slot for. So I would say this tab's pretty simple. Now we have the support tab, and the first card that I've got here is the Lang Solo Shock. You can get nine of them in phase A with no veteran C, and these are your standard two-man flamethrower squads, and they have four smoke grenades. So great utility and backup for your other infantry squads. They work very well with the Lovis from the infantry tab. 
Now what's interesting about these squads is they can actually come in the Komsomolets, which is a Russian captured infantry carrier and it has a machine gun in the front of it with 10 millimeters of frontal armor. It can provide decent MG cover at longer ranges but get it too close to an AT rifle it's going to get popped pretty quickly. Next card that I have is the Law of SPK. This is your standard infantry commander squad. Uh, nothing too special about these. The only thing to mention is that I only bring in one commander in the entire battle group. So you've got to keep it alive, especially in this particular build. Following that up, I have two cards of the 3842M Batons, which are your supply trucks. And I've got a card in phase B and a card in phase C. You're probably wondering why I have so much supply. Well, it will become apparent when we reach the artillery tab. Other choices in the support tab include the 50mm mortars, the two-man 50mm mortar squads. You get quite a lot of these, honestly. You can actually get 15 on a card in phase C, but I struggle to find effectiveness with them, although they can be pretty strong if used correctly. Then there is a card of the Schwalosa. This is just a machine gun squad with 1,000 meter range. Nothing too special about them, but can provide you with that little bit extra infantry support if you need it. But your infantry tab's already pretty stacked, and the Goyo Solo Shock kind of fill the role of any machine gun in this particular division. And then there's a card of the MG34s. This has the 1,500 meter range, so maybe a little bit of a different purpose, covering more open areas, but still don't find a space for them in this battle group. There is the other two commands as well. So you've got another Lovis uh, PK and also the Steer PK, which is a command car. The anti tank tab of the 12th Tartar Lake is. A pretty standard one. The first card that we have here is the 40M 40mm. I've got two cards of these coming in at phase A with one star veterancy which gives me a total of 12 across both cards. These are low tier AT, 30 points apiece, cheap and cheerful, and their standard AP shell only has 65mm of penetration. So you're going to want to make sure that you use efficient shot and potentially return fire as well so that you get the shots that you need to find the kills with these, otherwise they'll just reveal themselves at range and get killed themselves. One interesting thing about this AT gun though is it does have HE shells, which is something that low caliber AT guns don't normally have, so it can provide a little bit of fire support for infantry. On top of all of that though, they do have four of the rockets, the 40 millimeter heat rockets, and these have 180 millimeters of penetration at 800 meter range. So if you can definitely hold fire on these, make sure you turn off the AP shells and then they'll switch to their heat and that way you can find some pretty nice kills with these guns and they'll pay themselves off very well indeed. You've only got to kill one tank with these and it's paid itself off anyway. So bear that in mind, really worth having. The next card that I have is the Pansila Toro Raketa. These guys are a two-man anti-tank squad with a Panzerschreck. They have exceptional stealth, so great for ambushing tanks in the mid-game, especially when you might be under pressure from more heavy tanks or just like a bunch of T-34s heading your way. And this division, the 12th Tartar Lake, can suffer against that. So these will break it down nicely if you get, manage to get these guys into good positions. Then also in phase B, I have the 40M 75 mils. These are just pack 40s, except one thing to note is you only get two rounds of APCR. So 190 millimeters of penetration is nice, but if you want to rely on that, then you're gonna to have to have a supply vehicle nearby to constantly resupply those APCR shells. Otherwise you're reliant on the 145 millimeters of penetration, which is not bad at all. You use efficient shot, return fire, you're going to be getting through most things at close range with that sort of penetration. The only liability about Pack 40 is its HE shells. It uh, can often reveal itself at range uh, accidentally because of the HE, so bear that in mind. I uh, would generally recommend turning it off unless you specifically need those HE shells to pin down some infantry squads that are approaching. 
Then finally, I have a card of the 70 or 97, sorry, 38M 75 mils. And these are probably the worst AT guns that I've ever seen. <laughs> they are pretty trash. You only get eight of them with one star veteran C in phase C, and I've just kind of been using them to test them more than anything. They have heat shells, 75 mil heat shells with 90 millimeters of penetration. They do actually have five damage, which is quite a lot for an APCR or for a heat, I guess. Um, but 15% accuracy at 2000 meter range. <laughs> yeah, good luck hitting anything. Then there's the standard AP shells, which do increase in accuracy, but they lack penetration completely. They actually have less penetration than the 40 mils. Finally, you have the HE shells, and this is probably the only place where these actually excel other AT guns. They have two damage, uh, which is actually quite a lot for an AT gun. Their accuracy is limited though at the 2000 meter range, so you're going to want to deal with things at closer ranges like 1000 meters or 500 meters, and uh, you might get the most out of these that way. But Otherwise, I'd recommend against using these. I've just got them in here for the time being um, to test them, like I already mentioned. And finally, the only other choice is the 36M Nehez Pushka. And these are a two-man anti-tank rifle squad with exceptional stealth. So good for keeping hidden, especially in the early game for tackling light armored vehicles and light tanks. The anti-air tab is next and this is another tab that's quite limited for choice. There's only two units to choose from. First of all I have a card of 36M 40mm in phase A with no veteran C and then I also have another card of them in phase B with no veteran C giving me nine in total across the game. Now these are a pretty standard AA unit except from the fact they have AP shells. So these have 75 millimeters of penetration, they've got four damage, and they can fire at 1,500 meter range with the 82 round per minute rate of fire, which is pretty ridiculous. These are gonna be chewing up the, the sort of light, medium armored vehicles very, very quickly if they get in range. Their accuracy is not fantastic, so they might not penetrate straight away and therefore might get shot at at least once. But once these do get on target, they do a lot of damage, that's for sure. So if you keep them in light forest, in places where they can potentially ambush a road if they move forward just a little bit, that's, I would say, the best way to use the AP. Don't let them be engaged from range though, because uh, they will be in outranged in general by tanks with 2000 meter range. So you don't want them out in the open. Uh, definitely still keep them in cover, but if they, end up getting attacked at closer ranges, they can defend themselves with both the AP and HE shells. Those are HE shells actually pretty nice for chewing up infantry at range. The only other choice is the 2839M 80mm. This is a dual purpose gun. It does have 125 millimeters of penetration on its AP shells at 2000 meter range and 55% accuracy is not bad at all. And then it also, of course, has its uh, HE shells for infantry, which do have two damage. And finally, the three damage on their 2,500 meter range and the air shells. So an interesting anti-air unit, but I find that the 36Ms are cheaper and they get the job done. You can also get more of them per card. Uh, so you can get six 36M 40 mils in phase B as opposed to two 2839M 80 mils in phase B. Moving on to the artillery tab, the first card that I have is the Tuzarek. These guys are your standard radio squads, 15 points apiece. You get six of them in phase B with no veterancy. And with six strength, submachine gun rifle, machine guns, it's all pretty normal. Nothing too special about these. The great thing about them is you get decent availability in phase B to dot your radio men about. They can accompany your squads into more dangerous positions, which you wouldn't rather do with like the uh, Tuza TZ, for example. In phase B, I also have the HE46E. This is the 305 millimeter off map. Very, very strong. Can do a lot, a lot of damage with that off map but the HE46E itself is pretty brittle 
and can get shot down very easily by enemy AA and of course enemy fighters. So make sure your own AA network is set up and also don't fly these too far into enemy territory or they will just get straight up shot down before you've used up all of the strikes. So yeah, take care of these if you're going to use them. And sometimes in some cases you might not get a chance to use them at all, especially if your enemy has invested into a lot of AA. But that's why you have plenty of other options for artillery in this particular division. And one of those options is the 31M 149mm. Got two of these coming in at phase B, so I've got a little bit of radio artillery to provide me with some corrected shot. And these are very powerful corrected shot with their 7 damage. They also have smoke capability if you need it to support uh, any human wave infantry pushes that you might try and pull off. So that's what these are useful for in the mid game. Then in the late game, it's just more of the same. So I've got another card of the HG46Es. You get two of them in phase C as opposed to just one in phase B. So loads more off map. You've got four more of the 31M 149 mils in phase C. More corrected shot for that seven damage. But on top of all of that, I have the 25 pounders, these FK 280Es. Now, the main reason that I have these is because they are second best, basically, and we've already got all of the best in our battle group already. So these just make up the rest of the artillery that I want for my juggernaut late game. And with the 10 round per minute rate of fire, they're a little bit faster firing than the 149 mils, but they suffer with only having four damage on their HE shells, so they don't do half as much damage but direct shots will still potentially kill. The other choices in the artillery tab start with the Tusa Tissiet. These are a standard command radio squad in the artillery tab. They don't have as much availability as the Tuzarek though, which is the main reason that I don't bring them. Then there's a card of the standard 80mm mortars. These can provide you with some decent artillery support in the early game. You do get four on a card with no veterancy in phase A, which can be nice support. And if I was to take away anything, it would be my card in the anti-tank tab so that I can bring in some mortars in phase A for this division. Then next up is the 97M 75mm. This thing is pretty awful. It's only got three damage on its long range HE shells. And then if it does have some AP shells, but only 60 millimeters of penetration. So definitely don't purchase for either of those rolls. It kind of just fails. Finally, there is the 43M Stier FAO. This brings in 100 millimeter off map, which is very, very lackluster in comparison to the 305 millimeter off map you're going to be getting off those aircraft. So something probably to stay away from. Now we have the air tab, and I'm starting with a card of the ME109 G8. These are recon fighters. They provide you with information about enemy movements in phase A. That's what I use them for. And they're also good for taking on enemy fighters since they have 610 km per hour speed with good agility. So yeah, great for taking on enemy fighters. Maybe we'll struggle against anything with more resilience though, like an IL-2, for example. We'll probably take a couple runs to shoot down one of those. That's where the ME109G6s come in though, and these are the Pumas. You can see their insignia there on the side of the aircraft. Uh, they have 20mm auto cannons added to their ME109s, so much better at dealing with the heavier aircraft, which provide more of a fighter bomber role, or like just bomber aircraft in general. That's what you're going to be using these to take care of. And I've got two of these in phase A with the one star veterancy. And in phase B, I have a card of the ME210s. These are actually pretty cheap for what they offer. They have two 250 kilogram bombs, nice precision strikes onto infantry or tanks in order to slow them down in the mid game. That's what these are there for. Uh, they do have their two 20 mil cannons enabled in the front, and then they have their two machine guns in the rear. So they can fight a little bit in the air after they've dropped their bombs, but I would just get them out of there and... Uh, Maybe bring them in in groups uh, of, of six, potentially, if you can afford them all, because they can actually do quite a lot of damage, and they will escape relatively well with the 440 km per hour speed. And I have another card in Phase B of the Pumas, the ME109 G6s, for more air supremacy throughout the game.
Other choices in the air tab include the ME210 recon aircraft. This doesn't have any forward facing guns so that's why I don't prefer to take it but will definitely provide you with some decent recon information in the early game if you need it. Then there is the ME210 fighter. This has all of its guns enabled in the front, two 20 mils and two machine guns as well as its machine guns on the back. So this can do well head on but once it gets into a turn fight it will lose out to things like yaks quite hard so be careful. Then there's the JU-88A4. This is actually a pretty formidable bomber. It's pretty fast for what it is. 490 km per hour speed. It's a carpet bomber with 28 50 kilogram bombs but I'm not a massive fan of these. You don't get as many as the ME210s and the ME210s provide that precision that I prefer over the carpet bomber variants. There is also the ME210 CA1 prototype. This has the 40mm Bofors gun in the front of it with the 140mm of penetration, 65% accuracy, 150 round per minute rate of fire. This thing can absolutely tear armour a new one. So if you need some tank busting in the mid to late game, this is where you should go. You can actually bring them in phase A, but uh, not with any veterancy. So, yeah, bear that in mind, but still, maybe one to try out for sure. There is also a JU-88 variant with uh, 500 kilogram bombs, but again, uh, lack of availability in comparison to the ME-210s makes me prefer the ME-210s in this case. Also, the JU-88s are pretty expensive, although you can get six of them in phase C, so for Juggernaut, it might be worth a try. Since this is a tier C division, I thought I'd go through the defenses quickly. I've got a card of the barbed wire, I've got a card of the trenches, I've got two cards of the Bunker Schwadorza, these are the 1000 meter range machine guns. I've got two cards of the Bunker 40 mils, these are your 40 mil with the 65 millimeters of penetration, and then I've got two cards of the Bunker 80 75 mils. These are actually pretty trash, but more AT bunkers is always nice uh, for providing that ambushing capability and just sort of like a hard position for the opponents to take out. Honestly though, you could potentially swap these out for maybe more trenches and another card of Bunker Schwalosa since their cost is pretty high. So that's the 12th Tartalik. It's a division that has a lot of infantry options some strong artillery and potentially some strong aircraft if you choose. If there was anything I was going to change about this division currently it would be removing the phase C AT guns and maybe replacing them with mortars in the artillery tab for phase A and potentially some bombers for phase C in the air. So consider those choices if you want to create this battle group for yourself. On that note make sure you let me know what you think of my battle group built here. I will of course leave the battle group code in the description as always if you would like to copy it. But that's it from me. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.